I've I've worked with other um, narrators before on kind of other pen names and things, and you're pretty quick, Graham. If I'm honest, yeah, you're very, you're very quick. Yes. Up close, the troll was enormous, easily three times the height of the tallest warrior. The smell was the worst part. A rancid odour that stung Matt's nostrils. It was like a hundred gym locker rooms combined. Certainly, the blacksmith said, his hand resting just above the pile of kindling the warriors had dropped. A flash of light burst from Ergon's palm, energy leaping into the pile of wood. It caught a light instantly, the fire bursting into a roar. Its heat washing over the backs of the warriors standing in a line before it. The troll's eyes narrowed on the flames, recognising them for what they were. It let out a furious bellow, its fat belly wobbling from the force. Tracy Gregory, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Graham. How are you? Very good. Now, you're in South Wales, as usual. This is a bit of a Groundhog Day thing, because we've done so many of these, because we've done Quite so few. many books yeah. together. Yeah. Yes. So, you're in South Wales, but whereabouts are you? I can see a cat trying to get in on the act there. Where Is, is this oh, at home? She's all right. Yes. Yeah, I'm at home at the moment. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what's the cat's name? Oh, that's Flora, that is. That's Flora, is it? Yeah, we got two cats yeah. as well. They don't get in the way of the writing? No, thankfully. They kind of keep to themselves, isn't it? <laughs> Now, way, way back when we did uh, the first book we did together, how many have we done together now? Is it at about six? A bit more than that? Uh, more. Uh, yeah. I want to say eight. Okay, yeah. Yeah, because we're eight doing... I've, nine is... I'm just nine? finishing the the, goblin, the the next Goblin Summoners one will be finished tomorrow. So that'll be ready to go. And we've done... Yeah, we did three Star Commander, didn't we, before that? Yeah, three of them. Yeah, and we the people. This is the this is the new, hopefully the new series. I'm hoping. Yeah, uh, what can you tell me about this one? It's another it's another lit RPG. And for anyone who's not familiar with the genre, can you just explain the easiest way to understand lit RPG? Yeah, it's essentially um, kind of things that are typically associated with games like stats and numbers and figures that have been incorporated into a novel. Um, so as your novel goes, it tracks the progression of the character and how they're getting better at whatever they, their particular expertise might be in that particular novel and kind of what abilities and powers and things is all quantified uh, in a way that it isn't typically quantified in a, a more standard fantasy novel. Yeah. And they have like quests along the way, some major, some minor. And when they complete the quests, they get extra points in different categories and that makes them stronger for when they face the next quest. Exactly. So they're, they're constantly building and all the different characters are at different levels and they're coming up against people at different levels and there's there's monsters and all sorts of them. They're great. They're really, really good fun. I mean, they, they, they keep you guessing and you're keeping track along the way as well as they improve and they get better and better. Now, in this one, the characters are interesting. Uh, I loved the way that you've got Matt, who on Earth, in his real life, in his, in his former life, yeah. he's a con man. Yes. And yeah, he's not. You, you could have gone with you could have gone with carpenter, any kind of trade that you might have thought would be useful if you arrive in a new world naked, which he does. You've put him in this world surrounded by monsters and all kinds of other trolls and all kinds of other characters, and you decided to make him a con man. Yes. It was inspired. How did you get there? It was just the difference. So there. Like you said, he finds himself in this new world and he has to then kind of establish a society effectively because everybody else is also in this new world as well. And there is, there are a couple of novels. I mean, these novel kind of novels go back to Mark Twain, like uh, the Connecticut Yankee in New York. Yeah, whatever. I can't remember the title exactly, but there's a Mark Twain novel where uh, an American goes back to King Arthur times and has to kind of set up society there. But it's those people, you're right, they're always carpenters or engineers or <laughs> scientists or super smart geniuses. And He's not. I always thought it would be interesting to see that someone with a completely different skill set, how they would then apply that because it's not a can't do anything himself, essentially. Yeah. He's not he's not a good fighter. He doesn't know how to make weapons. He just knows how to talk and that's it. That's yeah. kind of his entire limit yeah. of what he can do. So I thought it'd be more, more it's more of an interesting challenge, I think. Oh, it's perfect because he's building he's building this new society. 
And of course, he wants to be at the head of it, so he's got to be a bit of a politician. And so con man seems obvious <laughs> when, when you think about it, you know, because he's got to get the other people on side to get what he wants, which is what politicians have to do. But it's also what con men have to do. And some people would think those two professions are the same thing. But yeah, you've done that. And the way he kind of weaves his way around that to get himself at the very top of the society of this new this new land that they're created, which is where I'm guessing the title We the People comes from because of well, yeah, the American he, Constitution. Yeah, he's not in the book, he's he's British, it is mentioned. Yeah. So he doesn't only constitution because we don't have one in the UK yeah. for anyone watching this. It's not for the UK, we don't have a constitution. The only constitution he's even vaguely aware of is the American one and he only knows the first line. And he has to kind of make <laughs> everything else up from that. So that's why it's called that, because that's the only line he knows. Classic like, con artist, he knows this much. But he's going to make it this big. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the idea for that came, from, uh, you, you say, from Mark Twain, and it's an, it's an older idea where people have, have been fish out of water, it, put in these environments. Yeah. But this has got to be the first one where a man who is a con man has, uh, has been put in that uh, position, hasn't it? I'm aware of, yeah. I mean, maybe yeah. there's a lot of books out there but, yeah, that I'm aware of, yeah. And they all seem to be, but it, you don't confirm it in the book, that they're in some sort of a game that's been put on for somebody else's entertainment. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Yeah. So it's kind of, it is very tangentially linked to the kind of Goblin Summoner series. Yes. In, in Goblin Summoner, the whole point is that the, you know, the gods in Goblin Summoner are just playing a big game with reality, aren't they? They're causing trouble yeah. and things like that this is yeah. that this is an, another set of that going on like yeah. they're doing this on the side as a bit of entertainment so it's the same kind of linked reality almost yeah. um but yes you're right they're kind of doing it just to see how these people go it's like a big game of survivor isn't it essentially yeah. <laughs> yes that's it yeah but then you've got the stranger who this mysterious stranger that so shows up and has to steer him in particular directions What's the deal with him? Why why is he there? Why did you find feel the need to have somebody who comes in from from outside this world but needs to kind of steer him? Well, the the idea is that every this all set in like islands, isn't it? They're all floating islands, and each island has a particular champion that have been picked by these people. And the idea is the kind of person who would pick a con man as their like champion would probably be a bit of a cheat themselves. <laughs> It's kind of the idea, because <laughs> he's, not, he's not supposed to be helping him. He's not supposed to be nudging him on. He is... But he is bending the rules, he? isn't he? Surely, yeah, exactly. but... Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. At the yeah. very yeah. least. Yeah, see, they're, they're, they're two peas in a pod, essentially. Like, that's the reason he's picked that kind of person, because he's that kind of person himself, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Well, why I made the stranger just a little bit more bit more mature like an almost an older version of matt like an old yeah. sage and i don't know if you decided to write him that way or that was my interpretation for when i played him but i thought i don't want them to be the same i don't want them to be rivals i want one to clearly be more dominant and to know a bit more than the other one so i just yeah. made him a bit more mature the, you're right in doing so because the stranger has been around for forever essentially and he like it's kind of the point is he recognizes how useful someone like Matt would be in that kind of scenario, even if Matt doesn't recognize that himself. Mm -hmm. Because you're right, he is more experienced and he knows a lot more and he knows that, oh, you can leverage this in a way that maybe Matt's only just kind of catching on to, especially near the end of the book. He's only kind of twigging that, oh, hang on, I can do this. And so, yeah, you're right, he, he kind of knows a lot more. Mm. Um, and it's just kind of prodding him in the direction that he needs him to go. It, it's interesting that with Matt's... Matt's got the brains over the brawn because a lot of the other characters that are in this society that he finds himself in as, as they as they join and start to, to form this this land, they are a lot more qualified to be able to do stuff than him. I mean, yeah. you've got you've got a warrior and a blacksmith and Elvira, she's 
what is what is Elvira? But she's a warrior too, really, isn't she? She's like a, she's like a hunter, isn't she? She's a hunter, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. if you've got yourself a hunter, you've got yourself a warrior and you've got yourself a blacksmith, you're in pretty good shape. You don't really need much else, but he's managed to manipulate it that they need him, even though yeah. he's not actually bringing any of those real skills to the party. He's just getting everything organised. That is yeah, also something exactly. that needs to be done. To be fair, you've got to have you've got to have some rules in society. And he, he he pretty quickly sorts out a constitution, and then you've got another society that's that's kind of developed in an isolated area, who have the ability to to ride flying beasts, which yes, gives it yeah. another dimension and then there's a dra- I don't want to give too much away but there is a dragon involved and they they have to bring it down and they have to, to work it out it is wonderful it's very I'm going to say it's very Terry Pratchett would that be fair yeah I think so yeah I read a, a lot of Pratchett when I was younger so yeah yeah it's not as good as Pratchett obviously but uh it is it, <laughs> it, it it is that kind of thing you must have so much fun with these things when you when you because you know when we've done goblin summoners together and when we did star commander as well you do from from almost scratch you invent a world you've got these characters with their personalities and then you put them in this world and then away it goes it must be so much fun to do it is yeah i mean if it wasn't if it wasn't fun i wouldn't do it yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that's but it is. It's, it's the you're right. It's the interaction of seeing that. Okay, well, if this happens, to this person, what is the logical outcome of that? Kind of how does it spiral out? And it's maybe not what you expect to begin with. Yes. You know, it's kind of tracking that. Because you know, people always think, oh, if I was in this situation, what would I do? Oh, I didn't. I'd invent a gun and I'd show people. Gun. I mean, you wouldn't know how to do that. <laughs> like we're on the computer now. Like I don't know how electricity comes into my house. I don't know how reactors work. <laughs> You'd have no chance. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it is then seeing that, well, what can you do? What do you need that isn't kind of... And I like the way they're interdependent on each other as well. You know, like I say, you know, you've got the blacksmith who's making the weapons for the hunter to hunt the beasts. You've got the warrior taking care of, you know, any threats that come from... You know, it's really to make them interdependent. I'm not sure Matt appreciates quite how interdependent he is on all the others. I don't know, but he's obviously, he can't, if he does know how interdependent he is on them, he can't let that show because after all, he's a con artist and he's got to be at the, the top of the society. Yeah, exactly. It's really, really nicely, nicely done and, and not overdone. It's just quite subtle how that it all, you know, because they face some pretty big threats, but they, they overcome them together, but all the time behind this, Matt's trying to be the main man and all this and he's yeah. still got he's yeah, got yeah. no it is it is really it was so enjoyable to narrate it was so much fun so what is a typical writing day like for you then because i think when we first spoke you were still working full time you, you you were working part time last time we spoke what's mm-hmm. the situation now you're doing books full time yet i am now at the moment doing books you've full-time. done it you've made the move yes. yeah well, it's nice to have been there with you for the journey yeah. as well, yeah, even though I'm only the yeah. audiobook part of it, the very tiny tip of the spear at the very end there. You're the you're the guy that's 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 building this whole thing from scratch. Well, that must have been a nice decision to make, to go, do you know what? I can pack in the day job now. It, it definitely was. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice to have more more time to myself, more time to work on you know, book things that I wouldn't necessarily have time to do before definitely makes work-life balance a bit easier because obviously doing essentially two jobs at the same time it's a lot of hours yeah um, and i don't have to worry about that anymore which is which is great yeah because yeah. i'm getting to the a, a similar situation as you as you know i was uh, a radio professional for i was on the air for i don't know close to 30 years i, I didn't tot it up and i got into audiobooks just over two years ago and i and i enjoy narrating audiobooks way more than broadcasting and I, I cut it down so I only work on radio, I only do radio station work now one day a week on Thursdays. I don't know if you've noticed, if I, I don't update files on a Thursday for <laughs> audiobooks. It's because I do podcast radio, I do stuff for Great British Radio, any radio work comes in, I do it on Thursday. But I'm actually at the point, and I was having a discussion with my wife tonight about, should I just give that away and then I've got, you know, another day I can do audiobooks? Because I just, I just don't know whether... I certainly don't get much out of um, radio anymore, and it does annoy me. So I might be going that way as well. Um, Good. Yeah, I, I I just don't know. And when you're writing, 
you're, you're typing them because we were supposed to do this a few weeks ago, but your computer yeah, gave yeah. up on you. Um, so the, the computer is an essential bit of kit. I've noticed there are so many more and more accurate dictation software programs. Like even, you know, one of the things I use, Google Drive, even on the, the word processor part of Google Drive, there's a thing you can click and it'll you can narrate stuff. And I've tried, I mean, I don't write for a living, but I've tried narrating emails and things like that, but I can never get on with it because I don't write in the right order. I write, I'll often write, if I'm sending someone an email, you start off by saying, hey, how you going? I hope you're well kind of thing. And you finish with the call to action, which is something like, uh, you know, when I'm going to this event in a few weeks time, can I claim my train fare? Whatever. I want that bit to be last. So I'll write that first because I don't want to forget to write that. <laughs> but then, then I'll write the opening next, which is how you go. And then, then in between, I'll try and find some stuff we can talk about just kind of small talk. So I don't tend to write them in the right order. And I find that when you're dictating is difficult to do because yeah. you can't just copy and cut and paste and move stuff around have you experimented with because if you could get it right surely that would really yeah. reduce your workload if you could dictate stuff my problem is that i tend to think faster than i can speak it so i so right it would just it would be probably slower for me <laughs> because there'd be so many ums and ahs and things where if i just type it out it comes out a lot a lot right easier for me yeah and how it, many it drafts how many drafts would you typically do of a, of a um, book Generally, about three. About uh, three. You nail it in three. three. That's pretty good. Um, some, some a little bit more. Some a little bit less. But generally, about three. Yeah. And uh, does like anyone be three. does anyone besides you read them before you get to the you decide on the final draft? Yeah, it goes to like some proofreaders and editors and that kind of thing before it comes back to to myself. Yes, but um, I don't kind of go. A lot of people do go in for things called beta readers, where they let people read it and see what they think of the story, and then come back to them and then make changes. I, I don't. I don't. Do right, that. I see. Uh, I, my thing is, if I enjoy the story, I assume somebody else will enjoy it, and that's that's kind of good enough for me, you know. It, but yeah, it goes through kind of proofreaders and that kind of thing. Yeah. Right, and then when the book comes out, how long then do you wait until you do the audiobook version? Um, oh, I generally send it to you the because the day it comes out. I see. Um, because I can't upload it to Audible as as a project until it's on Amazon. I see. <laughs> Right, it's got to so, be there first, yeah. Yeah, you can do it with pre-orders if you set it in advance. Um, yeah. The issue with Amazon pre-orders is if you if you miss one, they they take it off you entirely. So oh, I'd rather they? just have the book finished, ready, yes. done, put it up. Yeah, not a problem. Uh, obviously, some I'm, people can. I'm working with an author at the moment, um, and it's a murder mystery series of six, and we're doing them off grid. So I think he wants to. We load what he he will load them when the ebooks are ready, so they'll go the same yeah. time. I think that's the only other way of doing it. Yeah, the way of doing it is to do it in advance. Yes, like you said, and then when you as soon as because I have the option when I upload the the book to just upload the audio files there. And yes, then. yes. Um, so you can do it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the um, only way around it, I think. Yeah. So it's basically you put the book out, and then you just have to go. I wish Graham would bloody hurry up with this. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, you're, I've worked with other um, narrators before on kind of other pen names and things, and you're pretty quick, Graham, if I'm honest. Yeah? You're very, you're very quick. Yes. Yeah, I have no yeah. idea whether, you know, you know what I, what I do is, I'll let you know, is you'll put a deadline on the book. And I think on, on this one, on We The People, I think I had a deadline of about, I think it was about a month, wasn't it? About uh, a month. I'll be honest. I, I just pick the latest date it lets me pick. <laughs> so, oh, I see. Well, that's nice. That gives me the longest time. Yeah, yeah. Um, what I what I do is I look at the total number of chapters. So, for argument's sake, your books are usually around thirty chapters. I'm not sure what this normally, one was. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I I, you, I go about, like yeah. I go like it's thirty chapters, and I go, how many weeks have I got till the deadline? <laughs> And then I allow five days per week. Now, most days I yeah. can record on six days a week, but I, I work on five to be safe. I go, how many? I go five, 10, 15. Okay, so there's, there's 20 days in the next four weeks and there's 30 chapters. So I'll start off doing like a couple of chapters each day. But then once I've kind of got it tamed and I go, oh yeah, I've got 
10 days left and 10 chapters. I just do one a day, even though I'm calculating it at five days per week and I could usually do six. And that's just, that's the way I do it. And I do that with everybody's book. And I find doing that, I manage to work on multiple books at a time. So I'll do a, a chapter. I mean, if, if a book has just come on, I might do two two chapters of, of say yours if we're at the beginning of it, then one chapter of somebody else, one chapter, and, you know, and I work on up to eight at a time. I'm down to... I'm at seven at the moment, but um, one of yours will be finished tomorrow. So I'll go briefly down to six. And then when I get to the end of the day, if there's any time, because I get up at six in the morning and I, I get into it. I First thing I do for about the first hour, though, there's backwards and forwards because the Americans are on a different time difference. Yeah. So if they've sent notes and I have to reply or if there's somebody I've auditioned for and they've said, you know, can you do this and what are you charge and all the rest of it. I do all that. But I'm usually into it by seven o'clock. I'm, I'm recording and I keep going till till tea time at six o'clock. But if I'm finished at half four or five, I go, well, let's have a look at some auditions that I might fancy. But if I don't have time for the auditions, I don't get to them. So I've got that that space at the end of the day. If I'm if I've you know start, if I've finished a few books, the space at the end of the day expands and I do more auditions. But if I'm really busy, then there's no time. So actually it, it works well because you don't you don't know whether because if you do too many auditions you end up getting too much work you can't get it all done so uh, this system seems to work for me and uh it's a lot to keep track of with the characters though which is why i always have a, a file for every book and the first line or the first decent bit of dialogue that a character does when they first appear i copy that and put that in a different folder and in, in google drive so that when they come up again especially when they first i can go back so we, we've got a bit of consistency and sometimes characters may disappear for many chapters and then come back so you know i've got one for ragnar one for ergon one for the stranger one for elvira and they're all in there and uh, with goblin summoner though i mean there's so many because it's the one folder for the for all the all the books because the characters can come back in later books yeah um yeah. i see i see jack has been very conspicuous by his absence in that one i'm waiting for him to come back and i don't want to come out like uh, like yeah him. so i will mean, say that the the novel i'm currently working on is a novel entirely about jack and what he's is it to in the well, interim yeah well i hope yeah. i get to do that one because i'm looking forward to getting stuck back into him because he's an interesting character as well because he's such a villain and he's got a villainous past and i'm not i'm not sure whether i've made my mind up about whether he's a good guy or not i'm i'm on the fence but i'm leaning towards i'm not so sure he's he's his, his motives are honorable but i don't know I don't know. But you write such great characters. That's what's what's great about it. And I was so pleased when I did uh, We the People that that was consistent again and that there were, you know, there were more interesting characters as well and the 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 way that the characters interact, you know, like how Matt and Elvira, especially at the very beginning, are trying to weigh each other up. And I like all that kind of thing. It's so much fun to play with, you know, and um, it's all there on the page. I, I just give them the voices and just act it out. And it's just, it really is wonderful. I'm, I, I, I'll thank you again for choosing me to do, I think we did Star Commander uh, first, didn't we? And, and yes. then it was, yeah. then we started doing Goblin Summon and now we've got uh, We The People going on as well. So yeah, it's, uh, it, it is, it is really good. And I'm glad that the pace of it works for you. But if you were to give me a shorter deadline, I'd still make it. I'd just be doing more chapters each day. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't have told you that. Or you'll have me doing them no, quicker. Fine. Works yeah, out quite yeah. well for us because generally, by the time an audiobook's done, I'm either halfway through or finished. <laughs> so it's Great. Just, oh, there you go. Graham, this is another one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, never it's, ending. It is really good. So where are you going to take this then with the with with uh, with with the writing? You're still going to look for more stories and and more new series, you know, or you're going to just concentrate on the ones you've got. I'm gonna. There are a couple I want to do sequels to that I haven't had a, a chance to because ultimately, unfortunately, there's kind of business sides to things. So I, you know, I need to do the books that sell the most because that's what funds yeah. me being able to do the books. Maybe don't sell as well. Um, so it'll definitely be the case. I want to. I want to get back and do another um, level up kaiju sequel at some point. Oh yes, that was a nice one. Yeah, the sequel at the end. So yeah, uh, I feel like we need to do that, and I want to do another. Uh, we the people at some point yeah because um, that's we've just had the first one of that but there's a lot to work with on that one isn't there yeah yes yeah and i think it again it depends on how much time i can find it's a lot of time of day i want to at some point do a fourth book to kind of wrap up 
um, real time star commander as a as a whole yes. package kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. But again, it's finding space in the schedule to to get that done. You know, it's. So how many days a week do you find yourself writing then? Uh, well, now, thankfully, uh, I do very similar to you, kind of about five, sometimes six, but mostly, yes. mostly five. Yeah. It's exactly yeah. the same thing. I try and, I try and do a chapter a day, um, yes. which is normally about 4,000 ish words. Uh, yeah. And if I can get that done earlier, <laughs> I'll end up doing other stuff like your chapters um, are very consistent. I mean, I, I look at them from runtime and they always run somewhere between, I would say. 22 minutes would be a short one and 33 would be a long one they're always very consistent some authors i work with they can do like a nine minute chapter and then a 40 minute chapter following it but yours aren't like that yours are pretty consistent um that's that's a deliberate thing as well is it you try to does each chapter have a beginning a middle and an end in your mind yeah i've always i was always taught when i was younger and i was learning english that chapters should be essentially a mini story in their own right it should have a beginning a middle and end something should happen yeah uh, and maybe you can do that in 900 words maybe you can do it you have to do it in 4000 it depends on the the circumstance but yeah i've always tried to keep my chapters not the same length they're there as long as they need to be but it, it tends yeah. to pan out roughly kind of the same just with the way i write i think yeah um, i'd say on average they're about 30 minutes maybe just a little bit less but yeah i mean a short one for you would be 22 minutes and a long one would be maybe 33 yeah 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 it's just it's just a kind of i think a side effect of the way i write i like to get certain things in my chapters so that things are happening you know? <laughs> yeah well any author will know and any author that's watching this will know that that writing the book is one thing you mentioned sales earlier and you have to write the ones that sell marketing a lot of yes. writers i work with they absolutely hate it and some of them some of them i know um avoid it and i think uh, I think they regret avoiding it because they know that there's money on the table that then, but because then where do you, how do you go about the marketing? Because some of yours are selling really, really well. In fact, yeah, of, of the a... books I do on that kind of deal, because some of them I did that for those who don't know, there are two deals There's a deal where you get a share of the royalty as a narrator. And there's another deal where you get paid per finished hour. And of the ones that I'm doing where I'm paid per finished hour, yours sell the best. Yeah. So how do you market them? If there's, if there's another writer listening, what's the it, secret? There is, unfortunately, no magic secret for marketing. Oh, I mean, don't you, have, you want to let another author know? No, no, no. That's the thing. So okay. you, have to, you have to do it is the first right. thing. You right. So if there's, a, if there's an author's got an idea for a book and they've planned out the book and they maybe even plan to turn it into an audio book, they also need to have a plan and some time set aside for the marketing then. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So the, the important thing is you have to market and marketing starts from the concept of the book um we, we'd, lo we'd love to be able to write whatever book we want to write but unfortunately people aren't necessarily going to want to buy it you have to write a book that you know will sell and that, that's fine to do that and you can still be expressive and imaginative and have your own spin on it and things like that but you have to be able to go i know there's an audience for this what kind of things does that audience want um brilliant example is cover art uh, right. So, like, people always say, "Oh, you know, don't judge a book by its cover." But unfortunately, the cover is the most important piece of marketing you can do for your book, because your cover has to tell readers immediately what genre it is, what the kind of tone is. Is it, um, you know, a specific subgenre? You know, it, it, like you've, you've seen my covers, for example, like the We the People cover. It's a, it's a fantasy novel, and you know. Yeah. Now I've I've it's I've cropped a... it off just here. I've cropped off a <laughs> tiny bit of it, but right under there it says uh, lit RPG right underneath. It, it In does, fact, yeah. from from the magic of editing, here is the whole cover. Okay, now you can see the whole cover on the screen, and you can see that this is how it works. So just talk us through this. Why why is this effective? Yeah, so first of all, you, you immediately you know it's a fantasy novel because there's a, there's a giant eagle on the front with a knight riding it, right? <laughs> yeah. These are the kind of things that, that key in. And again, the it's got quite bright colours. So you know it's quite a, a light-hearted novel. It's not like a serious, dense novel. It's not know? dark, it's not, yeah, yeah. It's not dark or anything like that. Yeah. No, it's, quite, it's quite upbeat. It mentions, as you said, it says lit RPG, but it mentions the specific subgenre of lit RPG, which it is, which is kingdom building, which is building up a nation and that kind of thing. Yeah, um, and you you want to you want to get people to look at your cover and go, oh yeah, that's a fantasy novel. I like fantasy novels. Click on that, 
and then they go in and see a blurb and the blurb is then what sells them on the book and a lot of authors really fall down on these first two steps really they, they really do yeah um it, it's very tempting a lot of people it's very tempting to have art that is specific to your book like it's a scene or a character or something happening that you might be particularly proud of as an author but it doesn't tell readers anything about what kind of genre it is or what kind of book it's too it is. niche it's only for it's people who've niche. read the book right yeah and uh, the, it's going to sound a bit maybe mercenary but the unfortunate thing is you need to look at the other books in the genre that you're writing what their covers look like and yeah. have a cover that is similar because that's what readers look for <laughs> okay. a brilliant example i'm sure you've seen them on amazon everybody's been on amazon and seen them if you were to buy you know an erotic romance novel yeah you know immediately that cover is gonna have a shirtless guy on the front yes right? and yes. that's because that's the that's become trained into readers to recognize that oh yeah it's a shirtless guy i know it's an erotic novel yeah you wouldn't have a shirtless guy on the front and it turns out it's a hard science fiction book right because people right. are going to click on that look at the blurb and go that's not what i clicked on and then go back and never buy it <laughs> right and so that's got a match too okay that's got a match and that's the the most important part of your marketing because then that ties into all the other marketing you might do it's very common for authors i do it myself to do our adverts on amazon which is you know, you go on Amazon, you click on a book, and it says, like, oh, these are the other books you might like. They're all adverts people have paid for. Okay, uh, they are. Oh, I see. That's not an algorithm yeah. on Amazon. Someone has paid to put those other books there, up there. There is and there isn't. Um, okay. You go on Amazon, you'll see that there are different rows, one for the adverts, one for the algorithm. Um, and, again, the algorithm is important because that's how Amazon determines who it's going to show your book to. If you type in, um, like, Lit RPG Kingdom Building, right, um, it'll show you, first of all, a bunch of people who have paid adverts to be at the top of the listing. But the other books it shows is algorithmically based, and it will place to them based on how they already sell. So to an extent, success breeds more success, especially in kind of the Amazon ecosystem. If you're a book that's selling, Amazon yeah. will show you to more readers because they know the readers will buy it because obviously they get a cut every time someone buys it. Right. Um, whenever you get... Like you get emails from Amazon, don't you? Well, these are the books we think you might like. That's how they're picking them. They're they're looking at algorithmically and going, these are the popular books in the kind of genres you like, right? And then putting them forward to you. And again, this is why it's so important that your your cover and things are on point to begin with. Yeah. Because if people are clicking your book and then they're not buying it, Amazon looks at that and goes, well, people don't want this book then, and they just don't recommend it in the algorithm, and it gets buried very quickly. Um, oh, it's okay. it's. It's very similar to, to, I mean, this will go on YouTube once it's done. It's very similar to YouTube. The more yeah. people who are watching your video and interacting with your video, the more people YouTube will show your video to as something they might like. Mm -hmm. And then the more people interact with it, and then it shows again. And it's a kind of snowball effect. Um, and that, that can be disheartening at first because of, inevitably, your first book as an author, which is almost always your baby, the book that you really love, and you, some people spend decades writing them, is never going to do well because you don't have any fans who are going to buy the book on day release to bump it up in the algorithm. You don't have any people who are going to give you reviews off the bat. Again, reviews will bump you up in the algorithm. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have any prior history, which again, they take that into account. And you don't have like, it's a slow build process. Your first book is going to make peanuts. It is. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe 10 people will buy it if you're lucky. But then the second book you do, well, those 10 people will presumably, assuming they enjoyed it, mm -hmm. um, you generally get about a 75, 80% of the people who bought one book will buy the next book. But then eight people out of those 10 buy the next book, and then another 10 people buy book, you know, this, this other novel you've written. Now you've got 20 people, and the next time you've got 40 people, and the next time you've got, you know, it's exponential after that point. Yeah. Um, so it's the same so as show business. Someone, someone who's in a band, they, you know, their first gigs, their first couple of years, they don't make that much money. Then they start getting a following, and then you know, and the same with the with sales of music. The same as a comedian. Same as you know, even a radio presenter. They start in the hospital Idiot. radio, not making any money. Then they're in a little tiny market, and then they get to a bigger station and a bigger station, and eventually they might get on a national yeah. station, and then they'll do they'll do really well. Yeah. And yeah. to bring it back around to marketing, if you're not marketing, you're never going to get those ten people to begin with. Right. You know, so there is right. a, there is an element of 
you're you've just got to keep going and you've got to keep churning it out so you shouldn't think if you're a writer i've got to because they say everyone's got a book in them you shouldn't think i'm going to do this book one day oh yeah <laughs> you really you should not be planning on i'm going to do 20 books one day it should be it's a yeah, better goal yeah this is it's kind of the ultimately thing it's people unfortunately you see in the news and things like this you always get oh this debut author's come out they sold a book that's worth you know 20 million and they picked up by penguin whatever and Almost always, first of all, it's never true. Right? Yeah, it might be their debut under that particular pen name. Yeah. Doesn't mean that's their first novel. Yeah, um, and, and secondly, it's the case where, well, yeah, they saw twenty million in their debut author because Penguin put a load of marketing behind them, and that's why they sold. You don't see the four hundred other authors that they picked up that they didn't put marketing behind. It didn't sell anything. Um, yeah, well, that's the thing with news. Some people forget that with news, it's the new something that makes the news. It's usually something that's unusual. That's why it makes the news. So yeah. if, if it was usual for someone to put out a book and become a multimillionaire from one book, that wouldn't be news because that's how it works. When that, that work, yeah. Because it doesn't normally happen, that's why it's news. And a lot of people go, but people are constantly exposed to news, whatever it is, you know, things, bad things and, and all. It's like when they announce lottery winners. They don't announce all the millions of people who lost that week. <laughs> they don't announce all the people who won a tenner, do they? Like, <laughs> no, no, they don't because that's what usually happens is, you know, uh, yeah, exactly. somebody in every street wins a tenner but you know somebody only one person in the country every five years wins 128 million or whatever it turns out to be yeah it's 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 an unusual thing and we do get a a, a warped sense of the world by watching the news because that's a collection of things that don't normally happen yeah. and so you can see how people get to that thinking that you write one book and you're all set yeah i will say this, this does mean if you're a, if you're a reader watching this not just of me of any book any author you like it is very important that you um you put reviews up you know you, yes you do you kind of like and all the you know adverts you might pop up in your facebook and that kind of thing because again it, it, unfortunately sales nowadays because ebooks are the vast proportion of sales ebooks and audiobooks physical books are one two percent of sales yeah it's tiny wow and obviously all those marketplaces are all algorithmically driven because we live in the 21st century and everything has to have maths behind it for some reason so it's very important if you as a reader like an author you do leave those reviews, you leave those five star ratings, you go on Goodreads and you like it. it takes you two seconds to do at the, at the end of the book. You finish a book on Kindle and it masks you right there and then to do a review and rate it. It does. Yeah. You don't even have to put words now in, on Amazon. Just, you can just put stars. Yeah. Yeah. Do it because it helps that author out more than you think. It's really, really important. Well, well, having said that, if somebody's got to this far in the video and they're still listening and you would like a free download of the audiobook of We the People, which is the latest one that uh, Tracy has written, that well, the latest, no, it's the latest one that I've narrated of Tracy's books, <laughs> not the latest one you've written. So if you'd like We the People by Tracy Gregory, the next 10 people that email me and the address is in the, well, the address is right there. Oh no, that's the that's the email address right there. In the blurb, the, the my email address is there, which is graham at macmedia.co.uk. Yeah, but the address, there's a thing to click on. If you click on there and just say, hey, look, I'd like a free one. The first 10 people to do that, I will send you a code so you can download the audio book for free. And if you do like it, if you get to it, you know, just stick a review in there. You got the thing for free. It's the least you could do. So it, the, the, my email address is just, it's in the blurb if you're watching this on YouTube. You're not watching on YouTube, get the YouTube version and it'll be in there. Or if you can remember, graham at macmedia.co.uk, uh, do that there. So there will be a sequel then? Yeah, yeah, there will be a sequel at some point, yes. Yeah. yeah, it's been fun to do. It's always great to talk to you, and I'm so glad that your writing career is kicked off, that you're full-time now, and uh, it, it is just great. And you've got a website as well, haven't you? Uh, well, I've got a website for the, the publisher that puts out my books. Uh, What's this website I've seen, which is... There's one I've seen that's got you on it. It's pwhillard.co.uk. Or do yes, we not mention yeah. that? Is that a secret no. website? No, 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 it's not a secret website. I need to update it. Um, but that's the okay. website that we're all writing for. I mean, it's no secret that Tracy Gregory is a pen name. Uh, right, I've okay. Got yeah. out of a well, can I link to that website in the blurb yes. as well? I can do that? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. okay, um, great. Yeah, well, I'll it, do that. It's just an overarching website for all of my pen names and things like that all organized in, in one place. Yeah, so but if you search Tracy Gregory in Amazon, it just goes crazy. It's all in there. It'll it is put all everything there. in there, yes. Yeah, and Audible as well. It, it's uh, yeah. it's the same thing because there's a lot of audiobooks in there too. Not just ones that I've done. There's a lot of Tracy Gregory audiobooks in there. 
Yeah. So just cool. Uh, well, great to talk to you again, mate. Thank you very much. Continued success and, uh, and onward and upward because these are some very entertaining books very and a lot of fun to narrate. So, and thanks for choosing me once again. No problem.